This video is a journey. This video serves to explain the mechanical behavior of consciousness. It explains how consciousness creates reality and how reality is experienced relative to the general human experience. Quantum mechanics defines quantum behavior and celestial mechanics defines the behavior of celestial objects. Consciousness mechanics defines and explains the behavior of consciousness. It explains the whys and wherefores of consciousness and the fundaments of reality experience. The ideas presented are based on empirical self-evident observations. There are no stories and there is no emotional bias. The concepts about reality presented are not here to make you feel good or to think about them in a positive or negative way. They only exist as neutral descriptions about reality and are mechanical definitions created by emergent logic. You can use the information however you choose to, to feel however you wish to feel and think however you wish to think. You can use the ideas presented as a remembrance tool to remind yourself how the reality you're experiencing is an illusion. The information presented is merely entertainment. The ideas and concepts provided are all just perspectives. They aren't necessarily true for everyone because truth is a matter of experience and everyone experiences a different reality. However, Many people enjoy and can benefit from these notions, which is why they are being expressed in this work. If these topics and ideas interest you, then this information is undoubtedly made for you. The experience of consciousness is the experience of life. It is an odyssey of unending discovery and a wondrous voyage through time. Enjoy your journey down the rabbit hole. As all journeys, this begins with time. The experience of time is the experience of observation. Time is your medium of perception and is the fabric on which your life's story is written. Time could most easily be explained as an acronym, wherein time stands for the infinite moment experience. It is the experience of one moment that is constantly changing. Time has different definitions. One definition is that time is the experience of your consciousness changing its reality. This diagram symbolizes how time is experienced for most people. Symbol number one represents your experiential focus of consciousness. It's where you experience all the phenomena of your reality in time. Symbol number one represents where you experience your body within time. Symbol number two represents the probable realities you may experience in time. It symbolizes the realities that only exist as probabilities and how the future doesn't empirically exist. You create the idea of the future from your now experience of time, and the future only exists as what probable reality you may or may not end up experiencing right now. Symbol number three represents the linear timeline of your entire reality. Your experience of time is a constant change of moment to moment and every moment is simply a change in the reality you're experiencing right now. This constant flow of change generally carries an illusion of continuity and momentum, which defines your linear time experience. Your linear timeline is what you define as your history and your probable future. The physical experience of time is a linear constant flow of physical change. Symbol number one is your experiential focus of consciousness. Events such as walking your dog or making a cup of tea happen here. Symbol number two is the probable realities you may experience in time. It represents the infinite realities you may or may not experience collapsing into one. Symbol number three is the linear timeline of your reality. It's the non-stop flow of time experience. 
Another definition for time is that it's an experience wherein consciousness self-reflects upon itself and thus creates an experience of itself in time. An artistic way to look at it is to imagine two intersecting circles. Consciousness creates a state of being that generates the illusion of interaction and communication. This state of being is created by consciousness self-reflecting upon its own existence. When consciousness self-reflects upon its existence, it creates the experience of time within itself. This act of self-reflection is perfectly analogous to you looking at your hand and realizing your hand exists. Consciousness observes itself, realizing what it exists as, and this experience is called time. The experience of time is the self-reflection of consciousness. This diagram symbolizes the event of self-reflection that consciousness creates within itself. The two intersecting circles represent the state of consciousness that generates time experience. The circle on the left and the circle on the right symbolize the end product of consciousness's experience of time. Another definition for time could be called an experience of a mental oscillation of the concepts of before and after. Your experience of time is the subjective rate at which your mind changes its perspective. The mental experience of time is a back and forth association of past and future. The past and future are parallel perspectives that are relevant to the observing consciousness's now experience. This can be artistically modeled as a wave or a zigzag, as seen in the diagram. The mental experience of time is an association of past and future in one now moment. Because the moment is constantly changing, in order to ground yourself into an experience of continuity and time identification, you must first create a mental relationship to the ideas of past and future. The phenomena you experience in time exist in relation to other phenomena you experience in time. This mental relationship is an association of past and future. Because only right now exists, and the past and the future are imaginary perspectives, you only experience yourself now in relation to the ideas of the past and the future. This relationship is a mental association, and it could be symbolically represented as a waveform. The idea of your mental time experience being a waveform is not just a cute theory. This is based on actual experience. This is why when people drastically alter their state of mind, either through meditation or drugs, they change their perception of time. When people say they feel high, the frequency rate of their mind experiencing time heightens and they perceive more information about the past and future in the moment. Their mind speeds up while their reality speed stays the same or appears to slow down. This diagram represents the mental relationship of consciousness's experience of time relative to the general human experience. One thing to bear in mind is that time doesn't actually exist unto itself. The illusion of time is created within timelessness. There is only one reality, and that is your experience of consciousness right now. Mechanically speaking, there is no such thing as a parallel reality because reality is simply an experience of the present. A parallel reality is a colloquial term used to define a specific state of consciousness which relates to a specific experience in space and time. There is no such thing as a past or future, however, the idea of parallel phenomena like a parallel earth or universe, can help explain the changing of your reality right now. It can also help explain why some people have vivid memories, experiences of deja vu, 
or imaginings of so-called past lives. Notions of parallel universes, worlds, and other kinds of places are things that exist within your reality. Reality is not the same thing as the objects or forms described within it, so a parallel universe is no more a parallel reality than a parallel shoebox. Parallel phenomena define the time experience of your reality right now. The things in your reality, such as the visible universe, constantly change. Parallel phenomena do not change because they make up the change you perceive. Parallel phenomena could be likened to frozen states of light. You cannot actually perceive one parallel thing unto itself because they create your time experience to begin with. It would be like a flipbook character trying to observe one of its pages. The flipbook character's reality exists through the changing of pages, not through one page. Every moment you exist is a completely new reality and universe. The continuity you experience is mentally created moment to moment. All parallel universes are separate, physically having nothing to do with any other parallel universe. The flow of continuity you experience from parallel universe to parallel universe is a parallel timeline. A parallel timeline is a series of parallel phenomena, such as a universe, that defines the change within one's reality. A parallel timeline is a progression of states that creates the experience of change and the experience of time. A parallel spaceline is a series of parallel phenomena that exist in the same space relative to its timing on a different timeline. Spacelines help define the different probabilities of what could be taking place if different things happened in a timeline. Events and objects that exist within the same space line exist within different timelines. Events and objects existing in the same timeline exist within different space lines. This is a linear way of describing an experience that is multidimensional. All space and time exists multidimensionally now in one space that is your consciousness. The concepts of parallel timelines and space lines are theoretical, but are based upon actual experience. They are no more theoretical than the idea that you existed an hour from now or will exist in the future. Technically, only right now exists. Regarding the physical universe, the human experience dictates the perception of change to involve how physical light changes. Reality doesn't have time. The experience of time is created within reality. The experience of the physical world changing involves the speed of light and regular normal matter. Thus, the human perception of how the physical world changes can be expressed through the changing of reality every Planck time. Parallel realities, in the way that many people use the term colloquially, are in reference to a parallel timeline. For example, the world you're experiencing right now is one parallel timeline, and another parallel timeline would be a world wherein your parents never met each other. From a more mechanical perspective, however, you could say that those people in that parallel timeline aren't actually your parents, because your parents only exist within your timeline. Parallel timelines don't have to be extremely dissimilar from each other. One atom difference is a completely different parallel timeline. It could be as simple a difference as you choosing to do something this timeline version of yourself didn't choose to do. That could be anything from blinking your eyes to wearing a different outfit. Any difference whatsoever is a totally different parallel universe and thus part of a different parallel timeline. All parallel timelines and parallel space lines are happening right now.
All parallel universes exist right now. All parallel timelines exist right now. You only experience the reality that is most relevant to your state of consciousness. Parallel phenomena are potential states of consciousness that already exist within consciousness. The reason you don't experience all the other universes is because your consciousness is focused a certain way dimensionally. All this means is that your consciousness is focused in a way that makes the other parallel universes seem non-existent. This is similar to how being in a large house can make outside of that house seem non-experiential because it's outside of your current focus. If a person's consciousness isn't focused like how most people's consciousness is focused, for example, they can perceive seemingly multiple worlds at once, they are usually called crazy. That's because they have a mental and physical disposition towards that perspective of reality, don't know how or why it's happening, and can't communicate their experience in a normal way. What insane people experience as real is just as solid and tangible as what normal people experience. They are hallucinating due to the chemicals in their brain, just as you are right now. The only difference is that their hallucinations aren't similar to what most people hallucinate. Reality is 100% subjective because it's based upon your personal experience of your unique brain. Parallel universes and parallel timelines compose the experience of time. They create the multidimensional film strip that makes up the beautiful story of your life. Reality has no change rate, but the things you experience as real do. To define how fast reality changes is arbitrary because time is an illusion. All you can actually do is measure what is changing within reality, and you create that measurement based upon the quality of change of a specific thing. Relative to the physical universe and regular, normal matter, a notable quality to define its change is the speed of light. Because time is an illusion, Motion does not mechanically exist either. Technically speaking, from the perspective that Planck length is the shortest distance physically possible, speed is just a colloquial way to express a teleportation rate in space-time. That's a whole other topic, which requires a whole other set of new definitions to define what light is, what regular normal matter is, and what space, time, gravity, and magnetism are in totality. For now, the term speed will suffice. The movement of electromagnetic energy is what determines the observation of change in one's reality. The way you physically witness change in your reality is by observing the movement of light. The speed of light is what determines the quality of how your reality changes from moment to moment. The state of your brain is involved, but that state only defines your subjective experience of time in relationship to the properties that compose that experience. Light defines the human space-time experience along with other concepts. Say for instance you have two clocks perfectly synchronized and you somehow launch one of them at a small percentage of the speed of light. If you were to observe both clocks afterwards, you would ultimately find that the clock that was traveling previously now reads an earlier time than the clock that remained stationary. The closer to the speed of light you travel in space, the less you age in time from a stationary observer's perspective. This is called time dilation. Electromagnetic energy defines the breadth of the human capacity of physical perception. Even if you can't visually see light the way most people do, the effects of electromagnetic energy are still a fundamental component to the human experience. One example is how most people cannot see a radio wave, but can hear the radio, which is a type of translation of that energy. Another example is how the ultraviolet rays of the sun can affect your skin. It doesn't matter if you can see the energy or not, its effects still define a large portion of the human experience. Here we 
have a diagram that illustrates one Planck time as the amount of time light travels one Planck length. The arrows shooting upwards represent the path of light, and the black angle represents the time measurement of the event, while the white angle represents the space measurement of the event. Planck time is a natural unit of measurement used to measure an amount of time. It is similar to seconds or milliseconds, only Planck times are a much smaller amount of time. One Planck time equals about 10 raised to the minus 43rd power seconds. Unlike seconds or hours, Planck times are considered natural because they are defined by physical constants, one of them being gravity. One Planck time is how long it takes for regular physical matter of the universe to change. No phenomenon composed of regular normal matter or energy is cyclically faster than Planck time to Planck time. The human brain requires billions upon quadrillions of Planck times to create the experience of one second. Thus, the action potentials of neurons are a prime example of just how slow our perceivable reality works. Planck time is not defining how fast the brain works to create an experiential reality. It is measuring how fast the physical world in which the brain exists changes. Consciousness is experiencing a physical world that changes every Planck time. How fast the brain works is irrelevant because that only defines what you perceive within the changing of Planck time to Planck time. Planck time defines how fast regular, normal matter of your entire physical universe changes not just how fast you subjectively perceive it to change. Planck time is already based upon what composes your subjective physical experience. Your body is analogous to a measuring device which exists from Planck time to Planck time. How your body perceives time to exist is by definition going to be extremely, monumentally slower than Planck time to Planck time. Planck time to Planck time is the rate at which regular matter in physical reality changes. Whatever happens within physical reality is happening at a slower pace. For example, the event of you jumping up and falling back down may take one second. Another way to describe that event is to say it took over 18 and a half tridecillion Planck times. Here's a fun trivia fact about Planck length. If at every second you placed one million Planck lengths across the diameter of a penny, how long would that take? It would take over 373 quintillion years to scale across the diameter of a US penny if you were to place one million Planck lengths across it at every second. Whether through Planck time or Planck length, Certain aspects of human reality perception can be symbolically defined in mathematical terms. Planck time is a very special component in the understanding of the mechanics of reality perception. The things that exist within your reality could be labeled activity fields. An activity field is a defined portion of space-time. It is a sector of your reality that you are defining as a distinct thing. Everything and anything can be defined as an activity field because it is simply a distinct space where something is happening in time. Activity fields don't have to be a specific shape. They are simply a defined portion of space-time. Activity fields are an expression of attraction and repulsion in space-time. With this in mind, space-time could be more accurately termed space-time gravity with magnetism. This will be explained more thoroughly later on. If you examine the physical structure of reality, from the subatomic to the cosmic, you will notice that reality changes in space and time based upon different expressions of attraction and repulsion. Activity fields are defined portions of this attraction and repulsion phenomenon, and the different expressions of attraction and repulsion put the activity in activity fields. Activity fields can be big or small, or wide or thin. 
An atom is as much an activity field as a grocery store, which is as much an activity field as a universe. Anything and everything can be defined as a field of activity. The smallest physical activity field can be theoretically postulated a Planck sphere. A Planck sphere is a spherical activity field, one Planck length in diameter. From the perspective that Planck length is the shortest distance physically possible, a Planck sphere represents all possible directions something can move the shortest possible distance, given that movement requires the teleporting through the diameter of a Planck sphere. It's a quantization of space-time travel relative to normal matter. A Planck sphere's diameter represents the shortest possible distance something can move in space in one Planck time as regular matter and energy. It represents the smallest distance at which regular matter and light travels. This is why it could be said that light's speed is just a teleportation rate in space-time. A Planck sphere is not a particle. It is a defined region of space-time. Also, bear in mind, the values given for the area and volume are not the same thing as a Planck volume or a Planck area. A Planck area is the area of a square whose sides are one Planck length, and a Planck volume is the volume of a cube with edges one Planck length in length. This is not to say that activity fields are made of Planck spheres, because positioning is arbitrary and boundaries are illusions. The idea of a boundary between two things is merely a label of what appears to be happening within that activity field. Activity fields can contain boundaries, or they can be defined as not containing boundaries and thus be considered homogeneous. The smallest type of activity field is a sphere because a sphere is a symbol of perfect balance. It is exactly the same from all outwards angular perspectives. A sphere is an activity field that symbolizes an equal range of activity in consciousness. A sphere is an activity field that is in perfect equilibrium with its environment and can thus be observed as such from all directions. The ability to be observed as the same from all sides is what makes it a sphere and not some other shape. The largest type of activity field relative to the human experience is the human mind. This is because the human mind is what humans experience as reality in conjunction with a specific brain state. When human consciousness self-reflects upon its own existence, it experiences time. The experience of time is the experience of a mental and brain state, which is why the biggest activity field possible is the human mind, because the mind is what is generating the idea of size and brain to begin with. The reason the mind is not the smallest activity field is because the concept of being small is relative to what exists within the mind, with regard to experiencing a physical universe. Technically, however, all activity fields are an expression of the mind. Thus, the largest and smallest are relative to one's definition of physical and mental phenomena. The human mind works in tandem with the brain to generate what you perceive as reality no matter what size you perceive it. Together, this defines a state of consciousness. The overall idea of consciousness and its reality experience can be summed up by the term state of consciousness. A state of consciousness is a brain state coupled with a mental state. Together, they define the experience you have as real. The state your brain is in determines the state your mind is in, and vice versa. They are actually one total experience of consciousness because time is an illusion. What you experience as reality is dependent upon your state of consciousness. It is the experience of self-awareness you are having in the moment. 
Your location, your thoughts, your visual environment, and all sensory experiences are an experience of a specific state you are in. Whether you are climbing a mountain or fast asleep having a dream experience, it is all one reality experience of your consciousness. To fully understand the nature of reality, you must first understand the nature of consciousness. Consciousness can be defined in multiple ways. Consciousness is that which experiences itself. It is the quality of self-awareness that is a distinct thing unto itself. Consciousness is that which experiences its own reality. Consciousness is the identity of existence. Consciousness is the only thing that can actually be experienced. Consciousness is the only thing that empirically exists. This means that all experiences someone can have must take place within their consciousness. If it's not within their consciousness, by definition, they cannot have an experience of it. Consciousness is what reality is. When consciousness self-reflects upon its own existence, it creates time, and that experience of itself within time is its reality. The reason why consciousness must self-reflect upon its own existence is because it only experiences itself. You cannot experience anything but you. All ideas and concepts of outside of you or separate from you are being created and thus experienced within your consciousness. This is physiologically demonstrated through the fact that what your body perceives as an outward reality is merely a reflection of your nervous system. You are seeing your brain, you are feeling your brain, and you are thinking using your brain. You cannot experience anything but you. This is a physical axiom. This diagram illustrates how the reality you perceive around you is merely an experience you contain within your consciousness. The invisibleness of your reality defines and actually creates the experience of that which is visible. Visible in this context is interchangeable with the concept of that which is observed to be an outer reality. Reality is what consciousness experiences by self-reflecting upon itself as time. This diagram represents how the outer reality is actually an observation of the inner reality. The observation takes place within the focus of consciousness. Your focus of consciousness is physically symbolized by your body. The outer reality is the observation of the inner reality. There is no outer reality. What seems to be an outer reality is a vantage point created within one's focus of consciousness. The reason why the term focus of consciousness is being used, rather than just consciousness, is because everything is, by definition, an experience of consciousness. By using the term focus of consciousness, it differentiates the fact that consciousness is choosing to limit itself to a specific focus and perspective for a specific experience of itself. The reality that the consciousness may experience is an illusion unto itself because it isn't something separate from the consciousness having the experience. This is one of the reasons why people say reality is an illusion or that there is no reality, because most people define reality as separate from the consciousness having the experience. Right now, you aren't actually watching a video, you are watching a reflection of yourself. The experience you are having is the reality and the reality is an experience of yourself. The phenomena of your reality are symbolic mirrors and defined illusions that allow an experience of what that symbol represents to you. It is all empirically an experience of your consciousness. These words you are hearing right now are meaningless symbols that evoke consensus belief systems regarding what these symbols mean as a form of communication. 
there is no actual reality to them other than the reality you experience them to be. The very screen you are looking at, which displays these words, is merely radiating light. You are observing meaningless energy and automatically unconsciously giving it meaning for a conscious experience. To top it all off, time doesn't even empirically exist. The concept of time is just that, a concept. It is another automatic, unconscious definition you are imposing upon your reality. It is an automatic association you create to experience a specific kind of reality. It is an experience of self-observation. Your reality is your experience. Your experience is the only thing that is real. It is the only thing there is. You are the experience itself. Your experience may change. You may experience more clarity and more knowingness. You may experience a perspective that seems to contain more logical definitions for what's going on in your experience of time. But no matter what you experience, it is all a real experience of reality. No reality is more real because the reality that is experienced is just a perspective of what appears to be happening. Reality is an experience of consciousness. The experience of consciousness is reality experience. Your physical reality experience is created by symbols. A symbol is something that means nothing unto itself, but is given meaning for an experiential relationship. That relationship defines the observer's experience of that particular symbol. Symbols allow a focus of consciousness to have a special experience of the information contained within. Symbols are the expression of multidimensional information within consciousness. All information corresponds to some physical symbol. This is dictated by the human experience, given that all human experiences correspond to a brain state. Everything within the physical world is a symbol, including the different forms of communication. Even right now, you're hearing a voice, but a voice is just another form of noise. What's being said right now doesn't actually mean anything. You are giving it your meaning for your experience. Someone might hear this and become offended and angry. Someone else might become delighted. What the different people are hearing is their own mind and their own thoughts, using this voice as a symbol for the thoughts they already contain. Symbols such as text define a large portion of how most people realize information within themselves. This diagram illustrates just how meaningless common text symbols are. The left group of symbols shows text that is commonly used in English. The center group shows the same text directly translated into a variety of different cultures, containing text that ranges from ancient Egyptian numerals to Latin. The right group of symbols is even more arbitrary and doesn't have very much social context. It is there to show that the other symbols are just as meaningless and just as make-believe. The physical symbols of the world represent an underlying mental experience which ties in with sensation, imagination, and emotionality. Beyond the unconscious physical effects of how a physical thing interacts with its environment, physical things, such as an apple or chair, are only experienced based upon how you define that thing. For example, a chair is really just an arbitrary composition of atoms. It's not actually a chair. By calling it a chair, you're defining that nebulous form into a specific concept that you experience as real. That concept includes the idea of what it's made of, such as wood or plastic, and the idea that chairs are for sitting and not for drinking juice out of like a cup. These definitions define a state of consciousness, which corresponds to a brain state and a mental state. 
Another way to say that is to say states of consciousness correspond to a physiological state and a psychological state. These definitions are automatically experienced and they create your reality through definition. Even if you objectively define something, it's not really objective because it's based upon your subjective experience of it. Definitions in this context are multidimensional. They define your space-time experience relative to the information you observe, which translates into senses. In more simplistic terms, the physical people, places, and things in your reality are as much symbols as text, audio, or any other form of mental communication. The reason why they may not seem like symbols is because they are experienced through unconscious physical interaction. Symbols like letters and words are more obviously symbols because they don't have the same dimensional tangibility. Letters and words are obviously man-made constructs with specific definitions based upon consensus. Physical objects aren't as obvious because there are an infinite amount of them and the way they interact with each other is based upon the physics of that interaction. That physical interaction is unconscious information. Humans in general do not understand exactly why things behave the way they do, even though humans experience the behavior of physical things as an experience of self. This is why the information is unconscious. Concepts such as the natural sciences are attempting to consciously explain the unconscious information that defines the physical human experience. The physical universe is composed of physical symbols, and those symbols function as mirrors of consciousness. A mirror is a multidimensional device. It generates a reflection of what is already visible. It is multidimensional because mirrors reflect at least one spatial dimension as well as the dimension of time. Looking into a mirror is not much different than how you physically observe reality. Time itself is a kind of mirror. Mirrors simply reflect. True mirrors do not absorb or contain anything relative to their ability to reflect what is already perceivable. A perfect mirror surface is a perfect reflector. It simply reveals what is capable of being observed by the observer. This is demonstrated by conventional mirrors by reflecting light that is already observable. The mirror principle is that everything within reality is a kind of mirror. More precisely, Everything within reality is a kind of dimensional mirror. This is analogous to saying that everything within reality is a type of reflection. The diagram provided symbolizes the mirror principle by denoting a regular, conventional mirror as equally a mirror as anything else in reality. The mirror principle is demonstrated physiologically through the fact that everything you experience is a result of an empirical brain state. The events and phenomena within your reality only reflect what you already contain, as an experience of your consciousness. From the human perspective, nothing you experience within the physical world is separate from a specific state your brain is in. Everything you hear, touch, taste, smell, etc. is literally a reflection of what you are. The outer reality is but a mere reflection of the inner reality, which, in and of itself, is a kind of paradox. The human perspective is experienced through dimensional mirrors. Reality is experienced through time, which is an overarching dimensional mirror. And this is why reality itself is composed of an infinite array of other mirrors. Every single thing within your reality is a kind of mirror. Literally. Every single component of your reality is a mirror. What is being reflected is your consciousness, because if it wasn't the reflection of self, it would by definition not be capable of being experienced. What is being reflected is the experience of consciousness itself. Things, the sky, a broom, a galaxy, an ant, people, atoms, etc. are mirrors. That is what they ultimately exist as. Things are actually, literally, physically, really mirrors. This is not a metaphysical romanticism. Just because things in your reality don't have a chrome, reflective surface 
doesn't make them any less of a mirror than the ones you may find in a bathroom. Things not only reflect light, they reflect the mental and emotional ideas about them you contain. Even this video you are watching right now is a kind of mirror. Letters and words are meaningless symbols you give meaning as a form of consensus belief called language. A fellow human being is a more complex mirror than a simple looking glass, but they are both equally mirrors insofar as they both reflect your experience of self as an observation of reality. People are just like everything else in your reality. They are mirrors of consciousness that reflect yourself back to yourself for an experience. The ability of someone or something to physically do something to you doesn't negate the fact that it is an experience of self. Conventional mirrors are only called mirrors because they show you, in the most obvious way possible, that they are mirrors. Other things in your reality are usually not called mirrors because it's not as obvious to people that they are mirrors. A conventional mirror simply holds the obviousness of being a mirror due to its chrome-like reflective surface. The diagram provided symbolizes the fact that a simple everyday conventional mirror is no less a mirror than the everyday space-time mirror you experience as reality. This isn't to say that things aren't autonomous. The concept to bring to bear is that things are as autonomous as you experience them to be because your experience of them is an experience of self. Things are mirrors because they reflect what you are back to yourself. The infinite amount of events, thoughts, feelings, people, places, and things that you experience in your reality reflect who you are, just as a conventional mirror shows you what you look like within that particular mirror. The reflections do not define you, they reflect what you are already defined as. The mirror of time shows you what you are, as a dimensional experience of self. Infinity is the state of being limitless. To be infinite is to have absolutely no limitation with regard to a specific quality. The state of being infinite is the state of being impossible to measure or quantify as finite. It is that which has no end, no limit, and no bounds whatsoever in its quality of existence. Infinity is a concept that is heavily embedded within reality experience. Almost all the components that generate an experiential reality are infinite in some way, shape, or form. Reality itself is an expression of an infinite amount of probabilities and possibilities collapsing into one ultimate experience. That one ultimate experience keeps changing, which thus makes it infinite in quality as well. Time itself is infinite. There may be a limitation to how fast the phenomena in your reality change, but that limitation is only there to create a limited experience and a fixed focus within an unlimited reality. Artistically speaking, the things in your reality that change at a certain rate can be likened to a canvas of which a painting is painted on. It defines the infinite amount of expression that is possible within your reality. The experience of time is still infinite in quality, albeit may be symbolically defined as finite. Within infinity, you will only find more infinity, even if it may appear to be finite. The concept of that which is finite is a definition imposed upon how something that is inherently infinite looks. The concept of something being finite is a definition which defines something as finite. The thing itself is only as finite as you define it to be. This is because the thing is an individuated expression of an infinite amount of other things. Because it is all one reality experience, Things are only as finite as you define them to be. Reality itself is infinite in quality, so whatever thing you define as finite within reality is only as infinite or finite as you define it to be. Reality itself is an experiential definition. The idea of reality being infinite in quality relates to the fact that you can have an infinite amount of experiences of it. The quality of being infinite, with regard to probability and possibility, is the quality of being complete. No experience is missing because there is no limit. 
The diagram above symbolizes the basic concept of infinity. It is the quality of having no limitation upon that which can be observed. Any number you can imagine upon the number line exists just by being able to imagine it. The act of looking for it will always produce the outcome of it being found because it is an aspect of infinity. The numbers on the number line have no end. This is analogous to reality experience, wherein the act of choosing to observe a particular phenomenon will always produce the outcome of observation. In physical reality, this is demonstrated through principles of physics. For example, if you choose to observe throwing a ball up in the air, you must physically take a ball and throw it up in the air. In this model, the zero works as a kind of mirror, reflecting everything by being defined as nothing. In simple terms, the zero defines all the other numbers on the number line by being nothing. It's a balance point that reflects the other balance point that is infinity. This is analogous to the human experience of time, wherein you only experience one moment that is always changing. The one moment you experience can be likened to the zero's relationship to infinity. The moment goes away before you can actually realize it. Time takes place in the zero now moment. The zero now moment, however, always changes based upon an infinite array of experiences collapsing into one zero now moment. The quality of being infinite is natural to reality. Reality itself is an experience of probability and possibility. Right now is all there is, and is always changing as an experience of time. It is not capable of being limited because it is infinite. The concept of any limitation or any beginnings and endings are always contained within that which is unlimited. There is no distance or time span separate from here and now. Space-time is an illusionary perspective of here now. The concepts of distance and the ideas of a past or future are just appearances. They make up how your reality appears. The way physical reality is structured makes it appear as if space-time is real in order to have a linear story-like experience. Without this innate quality of illusion, without the appearance of space and time, your reality would be too phantasmagoric to even have the experience of walking down the street. Physical reality experience is very much like virtual reality experience with regard to the illusion of space and time. The illusion of distance within space or time is the result of what appears to be going on. It is a special effect with no actual reality to it. Wherever you go, whenever you go there, you only end up right here and right now because that is literally all that exists. Space-time is like a dimensional flipbook. It is a linear experience of observing change. The fingers that flip the pages of a flipbook are analogous to your consciousness going from parallel universe to parallel universe, generating the illusion of time experience. Reality experience is created through time, and thus the effects of motion, depth, and distance are not real. Each page is a parallel perspective that contains the descriptive information of a total and complete universe. Each page, no matter how similar it may look to the next, has absolutely no relation to the next page, other than what the observer says is going on within the experience of flipping the pages as reality. Each page is just a static picture. There is no motion and nothing is happening within any page whatsoever. No page will ever be able to contain an event because it is just a page. The appearance of events can only be created through multiple pages. Using the flipbook analogy again, 
The observer's consciousness already contains the entire flipbook. All the information, all the phenomena, and all the parallel universes already exist, just how the entire flipbook already exists. The observer is just flipping through the pages that are most relevant to where its perspective is. If you examine the self-demonstrating properties of space-time, you will find that it is not what it seems. Unrealize the illusion of space and time, and thus perceive the reality of here and now. Space-time is illusion, here now is reality. This diagram illustrates the nature of the here and now, the here now. Space-time is the experiential result of how the past and future seemingly operate. Distance in time and space is an illusion generated from here and now. Space-time is an illusion. Here now is reality. All information exists here and now because information is an experience of one's own consciousness. Within the here now, you only experience one perspective that constantly changes, and each perspective is a format of your existence. You are experiencing the totality of your existence from a distinct perspective. The diagram presented symbolizes this experience. The main focus of this diagram is the black rectangle with the white line going through it. The rainbow rectangle is a magnified version of the white line. The top and bottom rectangles represent an infinite amount of parallel universes. The color black was used artistically to represent the absorption of all information. The black rectangle represents the totality of all reality that exists. The white line piercing through the center of the black rectangle represents the observation of one parallel universe. It symbolizes the perspective of the here-now that humans observe. The rainbow rectangle represents what is contained within that white line. White light is analogous to the rainbow spectrum, thus, rainbow was used. The rainbow represents the full spectrum of electromagnetic energy that is perceivable to humans. The rainbow color of the rectangle was used to represent the reflection of all information perceivable to humans. It represents the idea that all universes exist and are available at once, in one moment. It also represents that the information of the black rectangle is within the rainbow rectangle. All of existence is within each and every parallel universe. The white line symbolizes a collapsed version of the rainbow rectangle. The overall diagram is an artistic way of saying that 99.9 .9 repeating percent of reality is invisible, and yet, Paradoxically, the tiny infinitesimal less than 0.01% that is visible contains all the information of the totality of existence. The black rectangle is actually contained within the white line. The absorption of information is being reflected, thus becoming white. The human experience dictates that most physical phenomena that can be touched, tasted, and smelled can also be seen when in large enough physical composites. Even the instruments that are used to see the unseen, by definition, fall into the category of being within that physical bandwidth of perceivable phenomena. All the information is not being observed. The experience of here now is the platform of which the space-time framework is created. The experience of the here now is the fundamental experience of human existence. Existence generates all experiences of consciousness as existence. This is not about theories regarding how our physical universe came into existence. 
This is about the primordial attribute that is existence itself. This concept of existence can be used to describe how anything exists. Whether you are talking about a loaf of bread, a galaxy, a caterpillar, or a mountain, if it exists, then it holds the attribute of existence being described. There is only existence. Non-existence does not exist. Existence can only do two things. Existence can only exist, and existence can only change. Non-existence can only do the opposite. It can only not exist, and it cannot change. Existence is experienced through change, as an experience of time. Non-existence is the quality of not existing. Thus, what does exist cannot experience non-existence because there is no experience to be had. Where there would be an experience, it would by definition exist in order to have that experience. Non-existence cannot change because there is nothing within it to change. If something can change, it must by definition exist. Existence cannot transform into non-existence because transformation is the act of something that exists, changing how it exists. The concept of existence going into non-existence is a non-sequitur. It is mechanically invalid. Something that exists can only change. However, it cannot change into something that no longer exists. The concept of no longer existing is mechanically invalid within the context of physical phenomena. Technically, the only thing that can no longer exist is an experiential perspective of your reality. By definition, you cannot have the same perspective twice, because no matter how similar it may seem, the quality of it being a second time differentiates it from the first time you had that perspective. Still, having a different perspective is merely the experience of change. The experience of perception itself is still in existence. Existence cannot go to, or come from, somewhere or something. This is because space-time is an illusion. The idea of distance in space and time is where the concepts of coming from, or going to, originate. If you remove the space-time framework, those concepts are no longer relevant. The idea of going somewhere, or coming from some place, is based upon the illusory perspective of space-time. It is an erroneous perspective of change. If something exists, it always has and always will exist because time is an illusion. The concept of no longer existing is a colloquial convenience to describe one's experience of time. For example, let's say you drop a glass cup on a hard floor and it shatters. Afterwards, you take those pieces and you melt and meld it into a glass sphere. You could say the cup broke and it no longer exists. However, a more mechanical description would be that the cup broke, it was melted and melded, and it now exists as a glass sphere. The cup still exists, both in parallel universe timelines and the concurrent present timeline. The cup now exists in a different form, as a glass sphere. The arbitrary labels given to things are just convenient ways to communicate to others who identify with and understand that system of labeling. For example, communication through speaking the same language. Existence has no reason to exist because reasons are created by existence. There may be reasons as to why something exists in the format it does, but that only relates to the fact that existence can only change. The reasons as to why a phenomenon exists in the format it does is irrelevant to the fact that the phenomenon exists. A phenomenon's existence is a separate quality from the space-time story of how it seems to exist. The experience of time is created within existence. Therefore, existence doesn't have a beginning or an end. The concept of something starting and then stopping is a definition created from the space-time illusion. Space-time is an illusionary perspective within existence. Thus, space-time only affects what is contained within that realm of illusion. Non-existence is a state which contains no experience. It is the experience of not existing. By definition, you cannot have an experience of non-existence because it is no experience. It is impossible for something that does exist to change into something that does not because change is an experience. 
non-existence does not exist. Only existence exists. Non-existence is non-experiential, and thus, there is no experience of it. The non-experience of non-existence defines the existence of your reality experience. How you observe yourself to exist here and now is your experience of your reality. Reality experience is created by constant instant transformation, and that transformation is called change. Change is what causes events to take place. The perception of change is what creates your experience of time. Within reality, nothing ever stays the same. There is only change. The perception of any phenomenon is the perception of change. It is simply the experience of time. Time is a dimensional variable that creates the constant transformation of one thing to the next, even if that next thing is identical to the last. Nothing is ever exactly the same. All changes equally affect the qualities of an entire reality. No matter what the change looks like, whether big or small, it is still equally a change. One change in the components of a system creates a totally different system. One system cannot be another system, no matter how similar or identical they may appear. This is because a system is a whole thing, being called a system for easy and detailed communication. Every single phenomenon is unique and cannot be duplicated in reality. However, things can be replicated. Things cannot be duplicated because things, people, places, objects, etc., contain position as an aspect of what they are. The time and space in which something exists is an aspect of the description that defines the thing itself. If you change one variable of something, it is no longer that thing. This is why nothing ever stays the same. The dimensional variable of time changes from moment to moment. Thus, nothing can ever contain the exact same description as something else. Everything in your reality is constantly changing, and the quality of change that occurs relates to probability. Probability is the likelihood of some event being true or being able to be deemed a real experience through space-time. Probability is what defines the quality of how your reality changes. The law of probability dictates that any event, experience, or observation that is possible is only as possible as the mechanical factors creating that event. Anything is possible to be experienced because there is no reality beyond experience. The catch, however, is that what is possible is only as possible as the mechanical causes of that observed effect. Things change into that which is most probable, and what is most probable is always the result of a mechanical event of cause and effect. The degree to which an event is more probable than another is the degree to which your reality is setting up that circumstance in the present. Whether something seems probable or improbable is based upon one's perception of how the different components of your reality are behaving. The idea of an event being random is a non sequitur in this context because your reality changes through cause and effect. Whether you understand a particular event's causality is what determines one's perception of randomness. Reality can be experienced as random due to a lack of information, but whatever happens is by definition the most probable thing to happen. The experience of randomness is the experience of not knowing how a particular event occurs. Probability also defines the underlying human experience of time. 
All reality experiences relate to probability because you only experience one ever-changing moment. All information representative of the past or future pertains to probability because the information only exists in the present, which is always changing. Ideas of what just happened or what will happen are only as accurate as your experience of them in the present, and the probability of your perspective not changing very much in the next moment. In the next moment, the information you previously called the past or future can be experienced as vastly different. Having such experiences, however, can seem to break the continuity of your life story. The concept of the future is obviously a demonstration of probability, but the concept of the past is a bit less obvious. The past and future only exist as an idea created from the present. They are only as real as your now thoughts dictate that they are, relative to the physical phenomena that exists now. What your reality changes to from moment to moment determines your ideas of past and future, and it also determines what your reality looks like. That organizing principle is based upon probability. The probability of what your reality changes to creates your sense of continuity and your overall time experience. The structure of reality experience is continuously discontinuous. What this means is that reality is continuously changing, but the paradox is that as it changes, it creates discontinuity. Change itself is the experience of discontinuity. The experience of continuity is an illusion created using the discontinuity of your reality structure. This is similar to how time is created using timelessness. The screen you are looking at now to read this very sentence is literally, physically, not the same screen you were looking at in the beginning of this video. The only reason it may seem as if it is the same screen is because not much has changed. The time variable of the screen you are looking at has yet to produce enough recognizable difference, thus, you experience the continuity of it being the same old screen. Continuity is a self-created illusion based on the physical perception of momentum and the mental and emotional connections to parallel phenomena. Continuity and momentum are illusions because they are not mechanically what they appear to be. The experience of them is real, but they do not exist unto themselves in reality. You know the person you are today is not the person you were five years ago. Likewise, the person you are now is not the person you were a minute ago or even a millisecond ago. The illusion is created through the appearance of similarity. The fact that so much of your reality looks almost exactly the same from moment to moment allows you to feel like it is. The way people communicate using language, the inherent structure of language, helps perpetuate this illusion. Continuity and momentum are illusions because time, the dimension that is creating these experiences, is an illusion. Because you only experience now, whatever has happened or will happen is no longer experiential. The idea of continuity and momentum exist for the explanation of events that take place within space-time. Continuity and momentum allow for an easy-to-understand, linear description of a multi-dimensional experience. The way most people think of time, regarding what a clock measures, is an illusion. The only thing a clock does is change in a mechanical manner. It's not actually measuring time. The way a clock works is similar to counting on your fingers. It's not measuring anything beyond the frequency of its own change, symbolized by numbers. Earth orbiting around the sun doesn't measure time either. Day and night are no different than being in a room with the lights turning on and off. Time isn't a factor because the room itself is timeless. The pictures above represent different parallel phenomena. They do not mechanically lead from one to another. Within the illusion of time, they can appear to lead from one to another. One parallel phenomenon is one single experience involving no motion or change. When the dimensional variable of time is added, the separate parallel phenomena appear related. No parallel phenomenon affects another whatsoever. They are separated by their unique dimensional qualities. 
The experience of time is what connects the parallel phenomena to be experienced one after another in linear succession. Humans having a specific mental capacity that allows for the creation of this illusion can make the choice to identify themselves in the moment with parallel phenomena of the past and the future. That is what the experience of continuity and momentum is. Only one universe can be experienced at a time. However, some universes can contain the information of multiple perspectives and even other universes. Such an experiential universe could be colloquially called a multiverse. Continuity is illusion. Discontinuity is reality. Dimensional mirror is a term used to describe what consciousness creates for a dimensional experience. Dimensional mirrors are what reflect your reality experience in a specific way. These experiences of reality are being called mirrors because they reflect your consciousness to yourself. Dimensional mirrors reflect your consciousness the same way a glass mirror reflects the light of the room you are in and thus allows you to perceive what you look like within that mirror. Dimensional mirrors are what consciousness creates within itself to experience itself in a certain state. The reflection of consciousness is the reality you perceive. For example, time can be said to be an overarching dimensional mirror. It is a mirror that can contain other mirrors. Humans experience the dimensional mirrors of their reality in threes. These dimensional reflections of consciousness are trichotomies of experience. Trichotomies of experience are what the general human experience is composed of. They create the human experience of multidimensionality. One popular trichotomy of experience is space-time gravity with magnetism. Commonly referred to as space-time, space-time gravity with magnetism is the fundamental experience consciousness creates that allows for interaction with an outer reality. Space, time, and the experience of attraction and repulsion are the mediums responsible for all physical phenomena. All events you perceive take place in time, and space and gravity are also connected to that perception. The experience of space is defined by experiences of distance, physical separation, volume, and size. The experience of time is defined by your consciousness self-reflecting on how and where it exists. It is defined by how you define the story of your life. Your dimensional experience of time is your experience of change, motion, feeling, and the overall momentum and continuity of your reality. The experience of gravity and magnetism is defined by experiences of resonance, mechanical interaction, causality, and the concept of physical forces. The word gravity is being used because gravity universally affects all physical phenomena. This is a dimensional experience because the reality consciousness experiences is one reality, and thus, it is one thing experienced through space and time based on interactive forces.
Physical, emotional, mental is a trichotomy that defines human perception. The physical world is perceived how you feel and think about it, and how you feel and think determines what kind of physical world you perceive. The physical experience relates to your experience of the outer reality illusion. The physical experience is based off of your experience of the physics of the world around you. It is the experience of the chemistry, biology, and mechanical processes of particles, waves, and energy. Your emotional experience is defined by how you feel about yourself. It is the experience of your beliefs about your reality. Your emotional reality is the feeling sensation of who and what you believe yourself to be. The experience of the mental phenomena of your reality is the perspective you have of the physical. The trichotomy of past, present, future accounts for the basic experience of time perception. The past and the future do not empirically exist. However, they are perspectives that create the present. The past and the future only relate to the present and vice versa. You only experience the present. However, the present is only in relation to the concept of past and future. Your experience of the present is a definition you create in the present regarding the past and future. Empirically, you cannot prove the existence of the past or the future because they are just convenient labels to explain a multidimensional experience of time. You cannot ever experience the past or the future because they do not exist. You can only experience the present as a trichotomy of past, present, future. Memory, sensation, and imagination define how you experience your reality. Your memory and imagination are what you use to define your now experience of reality. Your now experience of reality is what you energetically feel your existence as. Your memory is what you use to navigate the illusion of continuity you create from moment to moment. It is a dimensional experience because the basic concept of memory relates to information of one dimension being similar to the information of another. Memory is the experiential connection between parallel phenomena and thus is a multidimensional experience. Sensation is what the core experience of your reality is. Your feelings are the actual result itself of your existence. The sensations you experience are what you exist as, in relation to what you perceive your reality to be. Imagination is your experience of multidimensionality itself. This is why imagination is connected to sensation and memory. Your reality is literally what you imagine it to be in the moment. This is not exactly the same concept as what people might say they imagine or believe to be true. The dimensional experience of imagination is a visceral experience of consciousness. This is beyond what people like to talk about. Imagination connects you to anything and everything. However, there is obvious limitation dictated by the human experience. The human brain is, by definition, designed to experience imagination in a specific format relative to the physical world. Imagination connects logic to illogic, the visible to the invisible, and allows for the perception of probable parallel phenomena you may experience in time. Imagination is not just an experience of arbitrary thoughts of fantasy. Imagination is the conduit that allows for multidimensional perception. It shows you that you are more than just physical parts as a consciousness. Imagination is the creation and perception of new information, which is why it is connected to memory and sensational experience. Imagination is creativity. All human creations, such as the screen you are looking at, along with the English language you are hearing this in, originated from someone's imagination. You may have noticed by now that many of the trichotomies overlap and complement each other. 
Your experience of space relates to the past and the physical because space is defined by the light that is reflected in time from the present. The physical world you perceive is always a reflection of the past and is always just a memory. The physical world is literally a reflection of the past. It is literally an ever-changing memory. Your mental reality uses the experience of attraction and repulsion through emotional resonance. You constantly imagine and think about the things you are attracted to. When you physically take action on the things you are mentally attracted to, like gravity, you pull yourself towards that imagining of your future. Your present reality is your experience of time. That present experience is who and what you feel yourself to be. Your present experience of time is the sensational reality of your own existence. All human experiences are fundamentally a trichotomy. Even some of the trichotomies are composed of smaller trichotomies. A perfect example is space-time gravity with magnetism. Space is a trichotomy of width, depth, and height. Time is a trichotomy of past, present, and future and gravity with magnetism is a trichotomy of attraction, inertia, and repulsion. Trichotomies of experience are your perception of dimensions. The trichotomies of experience are so fundamental and basic, they account for all dimensional experiences a human can have. A couple other notable trichotomies of experience are behavior, feeling, belief, and subconscious, conscious, unconscious. The ego is an experience of self that consciousness creates to comprehend its other dimensional experiences. The ego is the observer. It is what consciousness experiences to identify its experience of space-time. Your ego is your consciousness's identity and navigator of the physical world. It's your experience of being in a flipbook of three-dimensional space. The ego experience that consciousness creates within itself is a trichotomy of experience. The trichotomy consists of belief, emotion, and behavior, and could more aptly be called a dynamic persona. Because your persona, the person you believe and express yourself as, is only experienced in time, it constantly changes. The person you are right now is not the person you were a year ago or even a second ago. The persona you experience yourself as is dynamic. It is in constant flux. You are literally a new person every moment you exist. What is changing every moment is your beliefs, emotions, and physiological behavior. Your behavior is always changing because you are in a constant state of motion. Your very heartbeat is testimony to this axiom. Your emotions are always changing because emotions are literally how you feel about what you believe to be true. Your beliefs about your reality are constantly changing because it is relative to your experience of time. What is going on in the moment is a reflection of your beliefs. Even if you don't believe this to be true, that's a belief. The person you are now was never and will never become the parallel universe versions of yourself that exist within time and space. There are an infinite number of parallel versions of you which define an entire spectrum of different realities and overall lifestyles you could experience. Parallel universes of the past and future do not define what you are now, they are reflections. The version of yourself that you are now cannot be another version because they are not actually versions. They are separate people inhabiting separate universes with similar DNA as your own. The fact that your DNA expression doesn't appear to change very much is what creates the illusion of continuity. The reality is that you are a different person every moment because you are still defined by your mental and brain state. Your mental and brain state defines what you perceive as the physical world, including your body. Your state of mind and state of body defines your overall experience of time and determines your ego experience. When people say they wish to stop, silence, or remove their ego, or when people say they have no ego, they are using their ego to create those experiences. 
Mechanically, you cannot remove your ego because it is what allows perception of physical reality. All you can do is use your ego to create the experience you call removing the ego. People can pretend to be objectively observing their reality, but that game of pretend is a subjective experience. Your ego is a neutral construct. However, when people choose certain belief systems, they will feel a certain way and thus express a commensurate behavior. A balanced, logical, creative, loving, positive ego is merely a reflection of balanced, logical, creative, loving, positive belief systems. Although your focus of consciousness generates an ego, your reality is all one thing, and everything within your reality is connected. Ego puts the I in interconnectivity. All things are interconnected. Everything is one reality experience. The term interconnected is being used to denote that everything is connected to everything, as opposed to the idea that some things are only connected to some things. As abstract as it may sound, this is a self-demonstrating physical axiom. The idea of everything being connected is a core component to the experience of the physical universe. The observer of one's reality is only observing one experience per moment, no matter what that experience may be. Whatever is observed is an experience of one observer, and thus one ever-changing multidimensional reality. Whatever is observed relates to whatever has been or will be observed because it is another perspective of the same existing observer. Different things are connected to each other by the fact that they are literally the same one thing. The fact that they are the same thing, but with a different experience, is what connects them. The observation or realization of connectivity is the conscious recognition of the oneness of seemingly separate phenomena. This experience of interconnectivity is demonstrated on a mental level, wherein you experience events, continuity, coincidence, or synchronicity in your life. This experience is also demonstrated on a physical level, wherein physical phenomena only exist as separate relative to their characteristic behavior. If the material construct of a chair behaved like a dog, exactly, from atom to atom, it would by definition be a dog. The difference between a dog and a chair is the observation of that phenomenon as such. This principle can be applied to any physical thing. What makes a chair a chair and a dog a dog is its expression of materiality. The reason why the term behavior is being used is to imply how physical material substances, such as atoms, are constantly in motion. Everything affects everything because it is all one thing. Reality changes in totality, so whatever you are choosing to do is by definition affecting the entire universe. Whether that effect appears big or small is an illusion, because all effects are equal in size and you cannot compare universal timelines from the linear human perspective. Cole's paradox is a simplified name for the paradox involving the brain's physical perception experience. It is the paradox of physical perception, and it reveals the illusion of physical reality experience. This paradox is extremely, extremely profound, and it demonstrates physically axiomatically how you literally are your reality. Cole's paradox is the fact that you experience an outer physical reality only as an inner reality experience of your brain, and yet, your brain is an aspect of that outer reality. 
This paradox is analogous to a projector being able to be affected by its projections. Everything you perceive within the world around you is the result of an empirical brain state, and yet, your brain is supposedly reacting to and being physically affected by what is going on in the world around it. All phenomena you perceive are an experience of your consciousness symbolically reflected by your brain state. The people, places, and things you experience in life can all be broken down into visions, feelings, tastes, smells, etc. They are all reflections of your brain. The paradoxical nature of the brain is that all the supposed autonomous people, places, and things are being experienced as the brain itself. Your brain is literally talking to itself, feeling itself, smelling itself, and yet at the same time it is not. The world in which your brain exists is literally being experienced as your brain. You cannot actually perceive a physical reality that does not reflect a specific brain state. The land, the sky, the sun, the moon, and all of the universal cosmos are literally a reflection of you. They are experiences you are having of yourself. If you were not the universe, you by definition would have no experience of the universe. The universe is a meaningless term used to describe an experience of the brain. The fact that you are literally the universe experiencing itself from the perspective of a human is an axiom. It is a self-evident observation. This is physiologically reflected by the fact that the very air you breathe, the water that makes you up, and the light that courses through you at every second are creating your body. The world around you, the universe, is literally what you were made of. It is the air you breathe, the food and water you consume, and the very energy you experience yourself as. The world around you is not detached from you, it is you. You are merely having an experience of it called the human experience. You are experiencing your multidimensional consciousness in a specific format for a specific experience. The fact that your brain only perceives such a tiny bandwidth of light as visible is testimony to just how specific your experience is in comparison to the infinite amount of information being generated from your consciousness. This is not some self-help, metaphysical, Pollyannish, nice-sounding concept with no basis in science, no basis in logic, and no basis in critical thought. This is not a secret, and this is not a mystery. This is empirical, self-demonstrating evidence. This is information that is so embedded in how people communicate to each other that it is often overlooked and unrealized. This is reality. The ideas presented thus far are not mere feel-good platitudes. This is understanding your breath, understanding your heartbeat, and understanding the empirical nature of your existence. This is not philosophy, this is not religion, and this is not about what you do or don't believe. This is about reality. What you believe and experience as your truth within your reality is your experience of reality. It is real. Your experience is your experience, and your truth is your truth. It is your unique experience and expression of reality itself. It is who and what you are. Whatever or whomever you choose to identify with is a real experience, and it is your unique, sacrosanct journey of discovery. What you experience within your consciousness is your reality. Your reality is literally what you are. You are the universe.